Okay, in a previous video we looked at the definition of a group which I've left on the board. So it's a set together with a binary operation with these four axioms. We have closure. So if we multiply two elements from the set, we end up with an element in the set. We have an identity element in the set. We have uh, inverses for every element in the set. And we have associativity. Um, <clears throat> so we also looked in that video some examples of groups. Um, including the group Zn with addition, and we gave some evidence that Zn with multiplication is not a group, but perhaps we could tweak it by deleting some members in order to get a group. And in fact, we can do that, and it's called the group of units modulo n. And so that's what I want to define here, and then we'll look at some examples. So definition, so given a natural number n, the group of units uh, un uh, is equal to the following. So this is going to be equal to all equivalence classes m uh, such that and so maybe I'll put a subscript in here to notice that we're taking equivalence classes modulo n, although I won't keep writing the subscript in here. It's the kind of setting that we're in here, and such that the GCD of m and n equals 1 with the operation given by the following. So we have the multiplication of the equivalence class of x and the equivalence class of y equals the equivalence class of x times y. So let's uh, briefly just sketch a, a proof that this is a group. So claim un is a group. So proof. So number one, closure. So let's see, in order to prove that uh, this is closed, we need to show that if um, x and y are relatively prime to n, then uh, x times y is relatively prime to n. So uh, let's suppose uh, the GCD of x and n is equal to the GCD of y and n, which is equal to 1. Good. And then uh, that implies that the GCD of x times y and n is also 1. And so that's a elementary um, result from the beginning of divisibility, so I won't prove that here. Um, but now notice, that means that if uh, so if x and y are in un, then x times y is in un. Good. So the next thing we need to talk about is the identity. So number two, so 1 is in u, and that's all I'll write, and I'll talk through the reason, and that's because the GCD of 1 with n is obviously 1, because the only divisor of 1 is, well, 1 and negative 1, but we're looking for the greatest common divisor. Um, and in fact, greatest common divisors are defined to be natural numbers. Good. So now, inverses. So, 3. So let's see why we might have inverses. So if, um, let's see, uh, let's call it A is in UN, then that means the GCD of A with N equals 1. So thus, um, there exist X and Y in Z where AX plus NY equals 1. 
But now notice that immediately implies that the equivalence class of A times the equivalence class of X equals the equivalence class of 1 just by taking equivalence classes of both sides and then using our operation. So in other words, this X that we get from solving this Diophantine equation will be the inverse. So in general, you would have to use the extended Euclidean algorithm for that. So in other words, we've got that every element has an inverse. Okay, fantastic. Now associativity, I won't write anything down for that. Notice the associativity is just inherited from the fact that the multiplication happening in here is happening within the integers themselves and we know the associativity of multiplication in the integers. Okay, great. So I'll clean this up and then we'll look at a couple of multiplication tables in uh, UN for some values of N. Okay, so we introduced UN, the group of units modulo N, and then we also proved that it was a group. You know, it was a bit of a sketch of a proof, um, but you can fill in the details pretty easily. And now we want to look at some multiplication, multiplication tables mod N. So uh, let's look maybe first at U6. So that will be equal to just the numbers 1 and 5. And now notice I haven't written bracket 1 and bracket 5. Um, we're using the understanding here that these are in fact equivalence classes in just simplifying notation. <coughs> So now if we make a multiplication table here, and now notice this multiplication is modulo 6. So we have 1 and 5, 1 and 5. So 1 times 1 is obviously 1. 1 times 5 is obviously 5. 5 times 1 is 5. Um, and then finally, 5 times 5 is 25. But since we're working modulo 6, that equals 1. So now, even though we've proven this in general, that uh, U N is a group, we can see immediately that this is a group. So we have closure under multiplication, we have an identity of 1, everything has an inverse, in fact everything is its own inverse, and then again the associativity is inherited from the integers. Good. Let's look at maybe another one. Let's look at U5. So that'll be the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. So since 5 is prime, we get every number uh, smaller than 5 except for 0. So again, we'll make a multiplication table. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's do all of the multiplications. So I'll fill in the easy row and column immediately uh, using the fact that 1 is the identity. Now 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6, which is 1. So that means that 2 and 3 are inverses of each other, which is nice. Now 2 times 4 is 8, which is 3. Uh, 3 times 2 is 6, which is again 1. 3 times 3 is 9, which is 4. And then finally, uh, 3 times 4 is 12, which is 2 mod 5. Good. Now uh, we can fill in the rest. 4 times 2 is 8, which is 3. 4 times 3, which is 12, which is 2. And then finally, 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 is 15 plus 1. In other words, it's 1 mod 5. Good. So now again, we can check that this satisfies the axioms. So notice we have a 1 in every row and column, which means that everything has an inverse. Um, and, you know, we have closure and everything else that we need as well. Um, okay, so uh, those are two examples, so you can like create a bunch more examples pretty easily, um, but I won't do that here.